You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. Hi, and thank you for joining Bobby P on a very special edition of One Guy, One Attractive Lady, and a Lot of Wine. Uh, Jim's up in Boston on business, and um, we have a wonderful guest who's been on our show before, McLean Oakson. Hi. And both of us literally had just gone back from vacation. Me from Newport, uh, you from St. John's. Yes. And uh, as you can see, summer's still in full swing. I am still tan. This I is, still, yeah, this I, is me yep. with 10 full days of sun, so this is about... All I get in life. So. That, well, you're, you're like my wife. You use that SPF. <laughs> yes, at 80 or whatever. <laughs> the highest appropriate the FDA will approve. So. Well, actually, it's probably wise, but uh, I can. I'm a sun lover and uh, I, I love can tell you being tan. on the beach it's, and uh, you gotta, you don't. being on the water. It's, it's, it's what I do. But that's not the subject of our show tonight. I suppose. It's actually Think Pink, Drink Pink, Rosé. Yes. And both McLean and I love Rosé, and we're, we're going to be tasting four tonight. Very, very good ones. Two of the ones I've tasted before. Actually, one of them I've tasted before. And the other ones I have not. And uh, I'm interested to see how McLean likes my choices, and I'm very interested to see how I like McLean's choices. Thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> like I said, it's, it's going to be a fun show. And please, like I said, people, we told you this before, try rosés because they're fantastic in the summertime. Drink pink. Think pink. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to jump right into it since we have yeah, four bottles, McLean. So you might be familiar with this one. I think we talked about I this am. before the show. I love this wine. The Lea Argentier. Or you might say it better with your French um, tongue. Well, the more wine you drink, the easier it is to, to speak with a French accent. L'Argentier. Oh, I like that. <laughs> and this is a 100% Armand. Yeah, for unusual grape. A very unusual grape, which is funny because last uh, the last show we had unusual whites and unusual grapes. That probably should have been the choice. But this is a beautiful salmon color. Light salmon color. Oh, I love this wine. Very mild bouquet. So tasty. And it's old vine, so I think... Um, I don't know exactly how old the vines are, but I think they're at least 30 years. I believe so. If not older. What's great about this type of wine in the summertime, it's very refreshing. Mm -hmm. And I know there's a lot of white wines that are refreshing, but I just find a rosé extremely refreshing and elegant in the summertime. Like when you drink rosés like something like this, which is on the mild side, would you, would you say it's mild? Yeah, it's uh, super easy going, really, uh, really elegant, has a little bit of acid to it, a little bit of lift, pretty fruit. And it, of course, it, we already said it is a French rosé, which I think most of ours are tonight, at least not are all. So your half kind of is, and my half, I uh, so I admittedly uh, love rosés from Provence in the south of France, but surprisingly, I brought New World rosé um, to maybe challenge myself a little bit, show what else is out there. But um, I think you, you nailed it with these two, very super interesting uh, kind of classic style rosé is that perfect kind of peachy salmon color people are kind of looking for. And nothing that overpowers the senses. I mean, yeah. this will complement most summer fare. Whether you're on the beach in St. John's or on the beach in Newport, this will be perfect. Well, maybe not on the beach, but if you're on a deck or something like that. Surprisingly, I found a, a bottle of rosé that I sell that I didn't bring tonight. It's called Miraval, and it's the... Um, it's the chateau that uh, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt. We, I was just talking oh. to somebody about that. <laughs> so they collaborated with uh, the famous Perrin winemaking family of Chateau Beaucastel. It's a famous Chateauneuf producer in the Rhone. And they make these really kind of opulent, beautiful uh, rosés. And so I'm on a beach in St. John, and there's a hut at, on a resort. And there is Miraval <laughs> at a really good price. So wow. um, rosé is everywhere these days. Yeah. Uh, I've been pushing it for years, yeah. so I'm glad for <laughs> that. Of the trend. And by the way, I didn't mention this before, uh, what distributor are you with, uh, McLean? Uh, worldwide. Worldwide. Wines. Yes. And uh, you do a lot of business all throughout Connecticut and West Hartford area too, I believe, Me right? too, absolutely. I'm all over the place. <laughs> so uh, this is a thumbs up for me. I'm a bias because I brought it, but I, it's definitely a great summer rosé, and uh, you would not be disappointed. The price point is under $15, and how could you beat that for a good quality French rosé? Yeah, I am um, a sucker for this. I, I actually used to sell this 
uh, when I was with uh, a distributor called Fine Terroir, a smaller distributor, and uh, I rode around with the, uh, the representative from the winery. The wines are, are, are very gorgeous. They're from, you know, from the Languedoc, from the south of France, and just really overperform. And it's been a long time since I've had this rosé. So well, thank you. It's a real treat. You're quite welcome. It's kind of bringing it back. You're quite welcome. <laughs> you know, we didn't discuss uh, what pairs well in regards to cheese with rosés. I just happened to bring in some normal cheeses. I brought some horseradish cheese, some mm -hmm. cheddar, um, but. A, a rosé you could pretty much pair with any kind of cheese, I think. I mean, if your palate... Uh... Oh, I, so for me, there are two great uh, uh, pairings with food for wines. And one is champagne and one is rosé uh, because it goes literally goes with everything. It has acid and depth, but it's made from red grapes most of the time. Um, so really spectacular because of everything. Well, that's fantastic because I think I'm going to have a piece of that's this idea. one, cheddar, before oh, we pour generous. our next that's Domaine Vertrice. Mm. Little palate cleanser. Now this little beauty is from the Newport Wine Cellar in La Pite Gourmet on Bellevue in Newport. I was fortunate enough to have a wine tasting there last week and fell in love with this one. They actually had another one that was $45, but Bobby P said, you know, am I going to buy a case of $45 <laughs> wine or a case of wine that's between $10 and $14? Well, that's the problem with rosé. It, it kind of goes down like water. Uh, it's just super refreshing and uh, summer months really fun to sit on the back porch and well you know I was really surprised to see a $45 rosé in the tasting and I must say the taste was good um, but compared to the other four that they were also tasting I mean I at least my palate didn't because you probably tasted wine in that category price range for rosé yeah it's kind of a kind of a rare bird I mean you have certain producers that are uh, usually kind of uh, in the region of Bandol in the south of France you see kind of more of that high-end uh, rosé that you can <clears throat> excuse me, drink several years um, after it's been bottled. So it doesn't have to be this fresh vintage. Um, so kind of unusual, but you do see a trend of um, more towards the 15 and up, $15 yeah. and $20 for rosé, which is, is great. There's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of uh, options out there. Well, this is actually a four blend rosé and uh, it's Grenache, it's uh, Merlot, it's, uh, what is the other two? Probably in, you said it's from Corsica? Cirodella and the Nuccia? Catching my glasses. Yeah, I see. On. We both don't have the glasses on. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah. You know. So it's from Corsica, which okay, I, I, you did which, say that. Which is super interesting because it's it's kind of this, this marriage of uh, this this island that's been fought over between the French and, and, and the Italians for for centuries, more or less. Um, so it's kind of you know where do you where the grapes come from? What's indigenous? How do you pronounce everything on there? But I do see Corsica. Or I think they call it Corse, C O R S E, as just being this kind of up and coming. A super interesting wine region, whites and reds. Uh, you see Vermentino coming out of Corsica. And I think there's some interesting beer that comes out of Corsica. I think Jacob oh, at Wise Old Dog yeah. has uh, two bottles that I've tried, which were so fine and light that it was almost like a wine. They were so good. Very cool. Um, I haven't had those yet, but I'll have to harass them about. Well, this one doesn't have much of a bouquet. Not as, well, yeah, there's a little bit there. Rosés are, are kind of odd because if you drink them too cold, they, they can kind of close up. You don't get as much aromatic quality um, as they kind of relax and breathe a little bit. Like any like any red, really, they, they do kind of grow on you a little bit. You know, because this is a blend, I'm trying to think what stands out most in here. At least my palate, I'm going to say the Grenache is a little more pronounced, more so than the Merlot. Oh, I like it. They're, they're <laughs> not unsimilar between the two. Um, this is a little more stringent, I think, though. Yeah, the Largenti is, is a little bit lighter. Um, uh, I want to say more elegant. They're both they're both pretty they're both pretty savvy, but um, I like that a lot actually. It's super tasty. I think the complexity of this one um, makes it pair a little bit more interestingly or a little bit more difficultly with different food. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not sure if I could have a, a burger or a steak with this one, at least for my palate. Yeah. When I was tasting this um, at the uh, tasting, there was just cheese and crackers. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm tasting it again, uh, I, I think it's limited. At least what I would pair this with, at least my palate. I mean, you could even do like a heartier salad, like like a chicken paillard, you know, um, Nisoise salad. That's what I kind of love doing because you have the tuna, right? Like really high quality. Seafood, can, absolutely, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think there's a lot of a lot of variety you can do with this. So what what I love about the category of rosé is that it's basically uh, kind of like a red wine for white drinkers and a white wine for red drinkers. That's a beautiful analogy. I just, I just really, and people are kind of afraid because it's pink. They think, they think about the, the Behringer 
uh, white Zen days, and they get a little a little afraid that this can be sweet, but um, the wines are tend to be really refreshing and. You know, super it's classy. a stigma that I always try to suppress whenever I see people uh, looking at it in a disparaging way. And it's you're in the business, you know. This is just a hobby for me, so you have to deal with this on a regular basis. But um, you know, it, please, it is not a white Zinfandel. It's not a Behringer <laughs> white Zinfandel that you see in the restaurants uh, listed for seventeen ninety nine, which is way too much to be paying for that. Uh, this is a fine, um, decent, complex, mild white wine that happens to be a rosé. Exactly. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. I mean, sometimes, most times rosés are from, from red grapes. Sometimes they're whites blended in. It's, it kind of just depends on when, where the wines are coming from. I mean, I think this Corsican rosé is super interesting. I have not I've never had this before. So, well, I'm glad I uh, piqued your interest with something yeah, new. Yeah, it's lovely. And actually, you're on your way to Newport uh, in a short period of time, so you'll have to try... Uh, weekends, i got to search for that wine yeah, shop and it, go, go It's right on, right on Bellevue. I, it's really small. It's probably no much bigger than this room, but they carry only very specific types because they have limited space, so Perfect. I think you'll really like it. I love to kind of uh, sift through someone else's opinion when I go into a wine shop. So. You'll love it. So I think one of yours is coming up next, though, so yes. since it's down here chilling. Let's do this guy first. So uh, actually similar in color, but uh, very different in region. So I, like I said before, I, I really love uh, kind of old world uh, Provencal rosés, but I was challenging myself and I decided to bring two new world rosés. So this is uh, a relatively new producer for us. And this is a rosé, a Syrah based rosé out of California. Oh. Kind of unusual. It's called uh, Lawyer Estates, like the profession, spelled L A W E R. And uh, the rose is under Lawyer Estates, but they make a whole range of really beautiful wines called Hooker, um, which has its own special connotation. Obviously, we have uh, Hooker beers, so we're all kind of used to the analogy. But really, uh, the family, uh, the, uh, the kind of the head of the family who's been running the winery, uh, used to play rugby. And so he was the hooker position. So he and his wife uh, decided to start making wine in California. And the sister of the winemaker lives in Connecticut. That's amazing. So the, the wines are only distributed in, I, I think, California and Connecticut, just because she lives here. She and her family live here. So um, really special connection. If you can search out the hooker wines and lawyer family estates, um, they're pretty special. And we kind of get a great deal because we're only outside the winery in Connecticut, so. And I gotta special. say, this this is probably the more milder color rosé. Yes. Uh, you probably, you might not be able to see it unless you're Actually, watching high definition. Actually, I think the right next to each other so you can kind of see the. But in the glass, the it is extremely, extremely light colored rosé. These are not unsimilar. I think there's kind of a, a higher kind of honey note to this. Yeah. Which I like. I got that right off the bat. Yeah. Which I absolutely like. I, I love honey. And that's exactly what hit me when I tasted this one. And this one is available, obviously, here in Connecticut, you said, and locally. It is. Locally. We, we sold through a bunch of first. We just got a, a great new shipment in. Um, so it's been doing really well. It's the first year that we've brought the rosé into the state. And it's just kind of unusual. The California rosés can a whole variety. You know, some that are very kind of saturated in color. They can be made from Sangiovese or Cabernet or Pinot Noir. Just, it really depends on where the grapes are coming from, who's making it. And the colors of rosés in general, because I, I actually have a few rosés um, that I didn't bring tonight that are darker. That has to do with yes. how long the, the grapes are actually left and they're fermenting. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, exactly. All about skin contact and the amount of time. Um, and sometimes the method, you know, there's a method called sanye, which is a little more time intensive. Um, but the lawyer estates isn't made that way. It's just kind of like a fresh press, um, limited skin contact. But still really perfumey. I mean, still has a lot of, uh, a lot of cool things going on. So... Kind of small production, really kind of unusual. So if you can find it, it should be available. I think we still have some in stock for the rest of summer. And what is so. the price point? Um, it's under it's between fifteen and twenty. That's a great price. And actually, yeah. if I didn't mention the second bottle, that's also in the ten to fifteen dollar range. So that's perfect. both these are under fifteen. Yours are a little bit. This one that you the Lawler is a little mm -hmm. bit higher. Um, similar a little bit, but I think the Lawler stands out strictly because of the honey kick that you get, mm -hmm. which I love. I mean, it's not an overpowering honey, it's just very subtle. It doesn't actually add any sweetness. It's kind of more like an aromatic kick. Like if you have like a raw wild honey, the kind of wild flowers and kind of like perfumes your mouth a little bit, so. I'm trying with a piece of cheese after. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. Oh, super pretty. Yeah, that works with the cheddar, They're really nice. Mm -hmm. And uh, something like the Lawler, is that something that can be stored for any length of time? Yeah, I mean, I think for a couple of years, depending, um, it depends on the intent of the winemaker. Sometimes rosé is meant to be this 
drink the freshest vintage. So a year behind, so we're 2015, so looking for 2014 rosé. I've had great rosés from several years ago, I mean from, from 2012. It depends on the quality of the producer and kind right. of their intent. And they'll kind of let you know, also price point, usually if you pay a little bit more, um, they're a little, there's a little more longevity kind of associated uh, with the wine, so. And generally, I think for, at least for our viewers, and they know what price point we usually look at, I think you're gonna find most rosés that are halfway decent are gonna be between what, the 10 to $20 range in that category. I think so, I mean, th there's still kind of that, you know, that, that $8 rosé price point, it's kind of a, 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 a porch rip and sip it, you know, kind of a throwback. But, um, but some of these are really uh, food friendly, great for meals, and uh, kind of makes you slow down a little bit. It's hot in the summer. Yes. Rosé season is my favorite season of the year, actually. It, well, rosé season is always <laughs> season for Bobby P. So <laughs> even in the winter time. So well. <laughs> even in the winter time. So I think we got three thumbs up so far. I know this is this kind of a is a slaughter. It's it's really easy to just thumbs up. The problem is McLean, we're biased with the rosé. I know. So we should probably should have <laughs> had should have a gym here to kind of have like gym or one other person here to say, well, I don't know, guys. I don't know about rosé. We should have had a doubter in the mix, but we we're just here to like sell it. Just but you drink rosé. Since it's my show. I don't want Do a daughter on the show tonight. <laughs> we have two, three positive uh, rosés tonight, and the fourth one's coming up in a matter of moments. But um, I know you've been pretty busy this summer, both both vacations and work and so forth like that. Yeah. Is there any brand of rosé or any name other than the Lawler that's really out there right now that people are just going crazy for? Well, we do see a lot of hits um, on the Miraval, which you brought up earlier. Yep. And that's kind of more, um, it's a little bit about... Usually twenty dollars or above. I think the the statement might be around twenty one or twenty two a bottle. Uh, really distinctive packaging, kind of a short square. Uh, Trisha Bob. They're starting to make white as well. So the production is really high quality. Um, so we're seeing more wines in that uh, coming out in that uh, kind of price category. And also kind of small random production rosés. Um, I've seen a lot of my retailers really getting behind rosé uh, all year long. So for me, I you know when I sell rosé, it used to be June, July, and August. Yeah, that's right. But now it's it was you know kind of made of September, and now I love to stretch rosé into Thanksgiving. I love you, girl. <laughs> that's exactly where I. We're simpatico because for me, rosé is like kind of what you drink to go with everything, and if you're stuck cooking Thanksgiving dinner, which is usually me, uh, then I mean, that's kind of my jam. That's kind of what I drink you know throughout the day, and then. You know, it's December, right? And it's January. And then we, we're starting to see pre-sales coming out as early as March. And so it's, and people are buying. I, I went to one of my retailers in late March, and he told me I was too late to sell him rosé. And I was going, this is great news. This is the best, you know, the best worst news I've ever had because it means we're talking about rosé almost all year long. It's really great. So. Wait, also really quick about rosés is you're talking about Thanksgiving. A lot of times people drink too heavy of a wine during Thanksgiving. And you got all that heavy food. Rosé, you're exactly right. It sort of evens it out a little bit. It's yeah. not too heavy on the palate. It's not too heavy on Order the gut. Order the turkey. So let's get to number four. I'm really excited this about number four. This is the wild card. This is the one. So another new world rosé, uh, a little bit of a different animal. Also different between between the bottles. Um, I think yours were cork. Mine were cork, yeah. And mine are uh, uh, screw top or a Stelvin enclosure. So Stelvin is just the name of the. Uh, no, I can't open because it's oh, just, yep. and muscles. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Okay. So uh, so Stelvin enclosures. I know there's kind of a stigma behind it, uh, but it's really kind of guarantees freshness for wines that are meant to be drunk in the moment. Um, so obviously rosé is a great category for that. So and that is our eat, darkest rosé tonight. It is. Um, so this is Molderbosch. It's from South Africa. And Molderbosch first became famous for us for uh, making really beautiful Sauvignon Blanc out of the Stellenbosch region of South Africa. And so this is one of the rosés that I get to sell all year round. It's all Cabernet. And so you see a little bit of that kind of skin contact um, it's a little hardier, so it kind of rides that, that year-round feel. It's a, a winter rosé, if, if we had to talk about seasonal rosé. And also the people that do tend to shy away from rosés in general because they think it is a summer wine, this sort of tricks their mind a little bit because mm -hmm. they see a darker wine. So that's another good sell point for at least to get somebody into a rosé who might not otherwise be. And this is super great. I mean, South African wines are just an incredible value in general. I feel like we should do another show on South African wines. I don't think we have, that's a good they're, idea. They're so exciting, they're so exciting right now. And this rosé, so I, I would encourage viewers to not be discouraged by the color of rosé, 
that they're that they're looking at. I know some people are very particular. I only drink, you know, I don't drink like rosés, yeah, that are yeah, too dark. Yeah. But tasting this, it doesn't taste sweeter uh, than the others, or necessarily super fruitier. It's still kind of dry and minerally and beautiful. Um, has a little more body to it. That's what I would say. I'm saying if you were drinking all four of these in a blind rosé tasting, uh, what I would say about the last one we had is the body is mm -hmm. definitely a little bit more noticeable in this one. Yes. Um, but other than that, it's still a very dry rosé. Actually, really great with the horseradish cheese. Oh, let me try that one. Yeah. So it's a little, the Cabernet being a little more saturated, a little spicier, um, kind of keeps up with the personality of the horseradish cheese, I think. You're right. It really yeah, does. It's fun. And actually, that pairs or goes right into what I was going to suggest about anybody who's going to be doing a rosé tasting the rest of the summer, even after mm. summer. You can pair cheese with rosés. Absolutely. And people think, oh, you can only pair cheese with red wine. No, no, not at all. Yeah, it's actually a very challenging thing to kind of um, pick certain red wines with certain cheeses. Rosé is kind of like the, the free-for-all. I mean, just have, have a party, have everyone bring a random cheese and a random bottle of ro dry rosé, and you just experiment all night long. You know, Jim, uh, some time ago, actually was fortunate enough, he was up in Boston, to actually go to an all rosé party. Ooh. And he said it was actually a little overwhelming because he said there must have been at least 20 different rosés to taste. And the only problem I have with that, and I'm sure you've been in these situations before, is you start tasting that many. If you actually are drinking them and not just spitting them mm -hmm. out, you will lose the ability to decide what is best. Um, to me, four to five tastings at an evening, if you're going to get together, is probably better than everybody bring a bottle and you got 10, 15 bottles of rosé. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, you'll be either a little drunk and you won't know the <laughs> difference, or your palate will just get a little overwhelmed. Well, and part of the fun of rosé, so I appreciate um, both kind of what we call quaffable rosé, so just kind of throw it back. Uh, what they call a quaffer. I know, like that. Drink. Quaffable. Quaffable. And uh, throw that in, vo in the vocab. <laughs> and some have a little, a little more story behind it, some are small production by you know, a, a special winemaker or doing a, a small production and they have a great story. And so you kind of, you know, you want to pay a little attention to that, but really rosé is all about fun and celebrating the great weather, though uh, the last couple of days were a little warm. You know, they have, a, that's what's kind of <laughs> sticking. I mean, you were at St. John's, it's, you always get that breeze. Yeah. Just like we, breeze. there's always a breeze in Newport <laughs> and you got to come back to you this. Back to, come back to the valley. You're going, yeah, it's, but today was a beautiful day. Day. And this show is going to be airing in August, so the summer's still in full Fingers swing, guys. Fingers crossed. There's so much time to drink rosé. I, I just encourage um, all of my accounts and all of all of the wine drinking population just drink rosé. Like challenge yourself, drink rosé through September. Don't let summer just drift away. New back to school. I, I've already seen things in, in Target, and I just it's so depressing. But rosé is really, uh, really kind of special. Um, my mom's a big rosé drinker, and both my parents. So real men drink pink. If you weren't uh, sure. Once again, I think get you a pink, t-shirt. Drink pink. I need That's, to get you a t-shirt for men that, drink pink. Absolutely. <laughs> and I, I can't have uh, overstated enough that uh, the quality of rosés that are out there right now and the variety of rosés that are out there now, just try them. You, 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 you know, it's really, it's really unbelievable. And I think especially when you go to the shoreline, um, when you're kind of at, down in New, New Haven and Fairfield County, there's more coast. They're kind of, uh, they're busier right now than kind of the valley. But uh, so they've been a little ahead of the game. They've always been pouring rosé at restaurants. I think the trend up here is kind of exploding. So it's re super exciting. And what is the price point on this one? Um, this is uh, under fifteen. Another like 10 another to bargain. Yeah. Another bargain. Yeah. And uh, do you have any other tastings coming up? I mean, locally, uh, are you doing anything at any of the local places? It's kind of a quiet time right now. Uh, but come September one, we'll definitely uh, I'll definitely be kind of running around and, and doing. All kinds of things, cellar schools, and that's when things kick wine in. Wine teas, yeah. You know, it's it's super quiet up here in the I call it in the valley uh, for July and August, but it's it's prep time. You know, it's at rosé drinking time. Hey, any time. any secret tastings coming up, like at the Harford Bakery that we had a while back? Oh, that was fun. Do you hear? Have you heard anything? I have not heard. Oh wait, anything. we shouldn't be saying this on the air. We don't want too many people to show. No, up. we don't. We I don't want to keep that to ourselves. Actually, <laughs> you're right. You did not hear that on this show, but. Um, I gotta say, McLean, both yours tonight were phenomenal. So I want to thank I you. I love for yours too. Yeah, I think I think we're all four thumbs up. I, unless you're thumbs downing on no, the No, I got no, mash. I got no thumbs down. Actually, all I was right, good. actually hoping for one that just didn't kind actually of a no. satisfy, but they all did. They're all. They're all. So I think uh, before the show wraps up, we're gonna have one more sip with which one tonight? 
I'm gonna. I have a such I'm a soft going with spot. the Lawler because it. Oh, the, good. The I'm honey. Gonna go the, and what about you? I'm gonna go the Lorgentier because I have such a soft spot. Having told this in the past, I very much miss this wine. Thank you. Super pretty. I'm thinking, where can I buy this wine? <laughs> and once again, if you like a little bit of a honey kick, and I'm gonna keep saying that because I do get mm. that in the Lawler, um, definitely check that one out because it's just a mild enough honey kick where it satisfies my liking of honey, but it's not overpowering at all. It's super beautiful. And um, Sasha Lawyer, uh, she's the, the relative who lives in Connecticut. And she's always around, she's always doing tastings, and the rest of the wines are called Hooker. And uh, they make really fabulous Cab, Shard, Syrah, and Sin. I don't normally say that, but they just really kind of overperform, and they're just kind of nowhere. They're kind of under the radar, which is great. So and we, I'm we, giving her a shout out for that. We talked really quick earlier about um, Spanish rosés, which I it can be <gasps> yes, darker. Um, yeah. I haven't tasted too many of them. I bought a few just the other day. Um, what is your experience with those? To be a little on the harsher side? They, sometimes they're a little more in line with say, the Mulderbosch in color. Um, sometimes in concentration. A lot of Garnacha Rosé. Sometimes Tempranillo as well, if it's coming from Rioja. So a, a big variety. I think a lot of what you see is this pretty peach and salmon color, which I'm a huge sucker for. But I've, I've learned to train myself to just uh, just try any kind of new rosé as long as it's dry for me yeah. under the sun. And um, I'm usually relatively pleased. And actually, we almost have these in order of color. From yeah, light I to would dark. Switch. That might be the lightest, actually. Is that, yeah, I think yeah, that I is think the it lightest. Is. And I, I hope you can pick it up on, on the camera because that's why a lot of people also like rosés because of the beautiful color that you get in some of mm -hmm. a, a fine rosé. When you go from the, the lighter, a little bit darker, people sometimes refer to it as a salmony color. Yeah, and I think we taste in the right order, actually, because in the lawyer, in some ways, has a little more body uh, than the Corsica rosé, which I loved. But I think it, it just shows you that color doesn't define uh, weight or sugar or fruit in a wine. So just don't let your eyes deceive you, but use this part of, the, part of my experience. So as we wind down our last two minutes of the show, I believe, um, well, you're off to vacation again, or where you you're, where are you going? That was kind of my last vacation for the year, <laughs> I'm afraid. But um, like we talked about, I'm going to... Um, uh, oh, you're at Newport. Very, a very short weekend in Newport and um, lots of rosé drinking in between. And then in September, we're kind of off and running through the end of the year. So um, I'm thinking we need to do a South Africa class. I'm, I, I think, think I'm yeah, super, I, I, super I know about we have wines. never done a South African show, and uh, I've always been prone to South African wines. Actually, I don't think I've had a bad one. Um, and I know there's a lot out there. There's a ton of I know a little interesting fact I wanted to bring up. You oh. said ex rugby player for the, uh, the rose that you yeah. had. Yeah. It wasn't Jean Bertrand, Jean Bertrand, that was also the, uh, was he an ex rugby player or was he an ex soccer know. player? I guess rugby or soccer, they just want to make wine. Football. Yeah, Gerard Bertrand. <laughs> Bertrand. Gerard Bertrand. He was a football player. Very football. Very cool, yeah. So that's rugby in, in uh, England, right? I think it's soccer, right? Soccer, football. Yeah. Well, football I don't want to get any messages. I, I get those mixed it's up. Sometimes. too much rosé. It's, 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 <laughs> it's a beautiful part about rosé. You just, it doesn't matter. It's all. Well, actually, Jean Bertrand makes a delicious rosé bubbles. I don't know if he's oh, had that yeah. one. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's, it's beautiful. All right, so McLean, I want to thank you again for being on the show. The Thanks. time goes by so yeah, fast in the summertime. And uh, so I hope sweet you, for Rose. And we're going to do the South African show. Yeah, All right, great. so thank you again for being on the show. And uh, Jim, have fun out there in Boston. We I know you're you. busy. We miss you. And until next time, keep Bobby P. and McLean in your wine cellar. Mm -hmm.